Hey and welcome back. I'm sure most of you will recognize this. This is one of those cheap 4 inch milling vices that you can pick up on eBay for like 100 bucks. And in the hobby machining world, they are a really popular option. Obviously all of us would ditch this vice for a Kurt milling vice if we could, but the smallest one that they make is easily $1000 plus once I get it imported. To put that into perspective, I could almost buy two brand new mini lathes for the price of one Kurt vice, though I'm not sure if it says more about the quality and price of mini lathes or Kurt vices. Though obviously we all know why these ones are so cheap. The quality just isn't there, and to no one's surprise, this vice has a lot of issues. I've known about the issues for a long time, but as it turns out, it's a lot worse than I thought. If we put the vise on the surface plate, we can see that it's rocking pretty badly, and the bottom rocking means it's not flat, which on a milling vise is bad news. Obviously if we move the vise so it overhangs the surface plate, the rocking isn't as bad, and that's more representative of how I was using it on the milling machine, but obviously it's still a big problem. The top surface isn't all that much better. I've known for a long time that there is a small dip right in front of the fixed jaw, so the parallels are never exactly the same height, which is also pretty bad news. And as you can also see, there's uneven contact beneath the fixed jaw, so one of these surfaces, or even both of them, aren't flat. To see just how bad it is, I'll blue up the vise. To do this, you will need some engineer's blue, which you can buy off the shelf, but I'll make my own using equal parts linseed oil and Prussian blue oil paint. Now there is definitely a skill in putting this stuff down onto the surface plate. If you watch Stefan's video on scraping, he uses a brayer tool, and I'm sure this works a lot better than what I'm doing, but I've still gotten okay results just putting it down with a towel. And you can probably see why this vice was rocking so much. The surface that I thought was flat isn't flat at all. The blue parts are the parts that were touching on the surface plate and hence got blued, and all the clean area is lower, hence why it was rocking so badly. Now if I had a surface grinder, I could go ahead and grind it flat and get going with the next project, and that would be a 15 minute job. However, I don't have a surface grinder, so I'm going to have to think outside of the box. I could use a cup grinding wheel in the milling machine, like I did on the toolmaker's vise, but I doubt I'd get it as flat as I did with the toolmaker's vise. This part is a lot bigger, so the best that I could expect is 20 microns over the length of the vise. That's probably better than it is at the moment, but I can do better. So to fix the vise, what I'm going to try and do is surface scrape it. Surface scraping is an old time method that is used to get really flat parts, though it's not used as often anymore because we have things such as surface grinders, though there are advantages to using surface scraping. If you've ever seen a machined surface before with what looks like a fine checker pattern, the chances are that surface has been scraped. Though don't get it mixed up with something known as frosting, or I think it's called flaking in some parts of the world, which somewhat looks like scraping, and I think it does help with oil retention, but ultimately it's not scraping. Now before I started scraping on the big vise, I had to get a bit of practice, which I did on this small dual press vise. As much as I'd seen videos and read about it in machining books, this will be my first time actually scraping, so if you're expecting a beautiful result, this is not going to be that video. Now to get started scraping, I needed to make a scraper, which for practice was going to be made from a high speed steel tool blank. The cutting edge is formed by grinding in a radius at one end and giving it a very high positive rake. <coughs> Now 
Now the high speed steel tool gave me a basic feel for the scraping process, but it really wasn't suited for the task. High speed steel isn't a great cold working steel, and even the very light amount of scraping that I was doing was dulling the edge very quickly. I have heard of people grinding scrapers from old files, and that kind of makes sense. They're the right shape and length, but it wouldn't surprise me if one or all of these are made from case hardened steel. So whilst the outside might be hard enough, the inside might not be hard enough to harden, so I quickly abandoned this option. Now I was looking online at buying an off the shelf scraper, but for some reason all the local ones were made from a carbon steel. And if you look online on the forums, pretty much everyone recommends that you go with a carbide scraper, simply because the cutting edge lasts a lot longer. So rather than get one from carbon steel, I'll listen to the experts and make one from carbide. Now to make a carbide scraper blade, you usually grind it from a carbide blank, which I have ordered. As a temporary solution, I'm going to be using a carbide blade, which is meant for a paint scraper, as a scraper blade for my cast iron scraper, if that makes sense. I'll make the scraper handle from a piece of thin galvanized steel and you want the steel to be thin enough to allow it to flex under use. Now normally you'd clamp the blades in place using a clamping mechanism, but I'm just going to use a screw to hold them in. I don't really do much carbide grinding in the workshop, so I don't have a green wheel, so I'll use a diamond grinder to shape it. The grinder leaves a pretty rough edge, so I'll clean it up using some 1200 grit and then I'll finally hone it on a diamond lap. And what I've found is that the scraper needs to be pretty much perfect, otherwise it leaves very fine scratch marks in the work. Before I get into scraping, I'll quickly deburr the bottom lip of the vise. The bottom edges are pretty sharp and whilst testing the grind of the scraper, I accidentally slipped and the edge cut my finger open. They cut corners making the vise, but apparently it also means that the corners will cut you. So to start scraping, I'll securely mount it in the bench vise, and then I can start scraping the blue high spots. Now I don't know about you, but when I was watching videos of other people scraping, it looked sort of easy. Not in terms of the method itself, but just the amount of force needed to remove the cast iron looked to be pretty easy. But as it turns out, you have to put a lot of force into the cutter to actually make it create chips. I'm sure that's really obvious to everyone, but honestly, looking at Stefan's video, he makes it look so effortless. Once most of the surface is scraped, I'll turn it in the vise and then I'll scrape in the other direction. Apparently it helps reduce chatter when scraping. I'm also trying out different methods of scraping. This method here should be a bit faster and I have seen other people do it, but unfortunately I just couldn't get it to work and the results looked a lot worse and a lot less consistent. Now once the surface was scraped, I'll remove any burrs using a whetstone which I've lapped flat using the three surface method. I'll then remove any dust and chips and then I can take it back to the surface plate. And as you can see, a lot more of the surface is now contacting the surface plate, which is a really good sign of progress. 
So I can now take it back to the vise and then scrape the new blued up spots. And as much as I try to only hit the blue spots, I will inevitably hit some low spots, which means I'm going to make them even lower. But as I understand it, it shouldn't be too much of an issue because this is early days and the scraping is pretty rough. It should also be mentioned that the blade that I'm using is a little too narrow for this rough work. From the chart that I have, you'd want a wider blade for this roughing step. A wider blade should remove more material, but this is what I have and it seems to be working. And after a few more scrapes, the bluing pattern should start to look more uniform. So at this point, I'll take a bit more care in the scrapes and make sure that I'm only taking away the blued up spots. And any parts that I miss, I can get when I go back in the other direction. So at this point, the best thing you can do is load up a podcast, pour yourself a cup of tea and get on with scraping because this is not a fast process, or at least it wasn't for me. And once it looks something like this, I'll use the scraper to break up the larger high spots to create more but smaller points of contact. And after doing all of that, this is what I'm left with. I'm sure a professional scraper could point out many things that need improving, but for my first scraped surface, I'm really happy with the results. The proper way to measure this would be to use a gauge and gauge the contact points per inch, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Now there are a few low areas, but the most important thing is that every single one of the blue spots here is exactly the same height. So when I put it back on the milling machine table, I'll know that the vise is sitting flat on the table, at least assuming that the milling table is flat, which to be honest is something that I really need to check. Now obviously this is not a smooth surface like you'd get on a surface ground part, but the most important thing is it is flat, or at least as flat as the surface plate, which in this case is at least 5 microns or better across the whole surface. I can now clean up the surface plate and then measure the top surface. We know that the top isn't flat and it's probably not parallel with the bottom scraped surface. Well, as you can see, there is a fair amount that needs fixing. The right side of the vise is about 10 or 20 microns lower than the other side, and I don't think it was that bad before I scraped the bottom, but it was really hard to guess because the vise wasn't level, so getting an accurate measurement was pretty much impossible. The challenge now is to scrape it so it's flat but also parallel to the bottom, which I think is a much bigger challenge than simply scraping it so it's flat. And because scraping 20 microns is a lot of work, I'll fly cut it on the milling machine to hopefully get it a little bit more level. And as it turns out, that made it a lot worse. I'm sure there were a few factors as to why it was worse but overall I've made it a much bigger job for myself. And I can definitely say that scraping at parallel and scraping at level was a lot more time consuming and difficult than it was just scraping at flat. Because the surface wasn't parallel, I had to mark out which high spots were too high and scrape only those ones to make the part parallel. It's not too difficult, but it is really time consuming. Eventually though, I got to a point where I was really happy with the results. There are dedicated scrapers blocks which help you measure the flatness with a test indicator, but for measuring on an import vise, I think using 1-2-3 blocks is good enough. 
and I don't know how well you can see it, but there is practically no movement on that indicator. So for all intents and purposes, I'm happy to call this surface flat, or at least flat enough for what I need. Before putting it back together, I quickly tested the fixed jaw to see if it needed to be scraped too, but it seemed to be in really good condition, so I left it as is. The engineer's square now seats a lot better in the vise with no major gaps. The real test though is with the surface gauge which I'll set up to test squareness. The indicator is reading about 4 or 5 microns on the fixed jaw which means that the top is canted over by about 4 or 5 microns. It's really difficult to read without a finer resolution indicator but either way it means that the fixed jaw is square to within about 0 0.001 degrees which I think is acceptable. Now before I put the vise back together there are one or two other things that I'd like to tackle. I've never been too happy with the amount of jaw lift that I was getting in the moving jaw. Even though the jaw is designed to help prevent it, and even with it properly adjusted, the amount of jaw lift was unacceptable. The mechanism works by having a half ball in a matching dimple inside the moving jaw, and the real issue that I'm seeing is that the ball and dimple aren't exactly the same radius, and the surface of the dimple is left rough from casting, which means it's biting into the half ball. As a quick fix, I'm going to use a dremel with a ball shaped stone to widen the dimple and smooth it out a little bit. It probably won't be a complete fix, but it should help. And whilst I have the Dremel tool out, I might as well clean up the rough casting. And I'll give it a quick touch up of enamel paint. And whilst the locking nut dries, I might as well give the whole vise itself a touch up of paint. Given how often I use flood coolant, I might as well make sure that it's completely protected from rust. I wasn't too creative with the colour, just a slightly darker shade of blue. I'm also going to paint these slots, I never use them and they're a potential spot for rust. And I'll give the top a coat too, since it's missing a lot of paint. And after giving it a few days to dry, the vise came out looking really nice. I'll give the scraped surface a coating of oil and the oil will now sit in the low spots and be retained for a lot longer than if it was a smooth surface. This is also one reason why scraping is a very popular method for finishing machined ways because the oil stays trapped in the low spots for a longer period of time. With the vise now back together, there's one final thing that I want to do. This is a small reminder of why you need to correctly remember how many turns of the column handwheel you've done. I'd rather not use this method again, but since the jaws are hardened, I'll use the grinding cup method to grind the jaws flat.
and a final test with an indicator shows a very tiny amount of movement on the 1, 2, 3 block. Now that could be down to the mill table, but the movement is less than 10 millimeters, which is a lot better than I was getting before. And that aluminium is reading pretty much the same measurement on all the sides, at least to within 0.02mm with these calipers. And that brings the Vice series to an end, or at least an end for now. I now have two great vices, one for small parts and one for large parts. Plus I picked up a new skill. I'm not going to say for one second that I'm any good at scraping, but I'm really happy with the results, though there is a lot that I can improve. But hopefully one day, with a bit more practice, I'll be able to scrape the milling machine and the lathe. I'm also not going to say for one second that this is a perfect alternative to a surface grinder. This whole process probably took close to 30 to 40 hours to complete on this relatively small vise. Obviously, I was learning along the way, but 30 to 40 hours is a very long time. I might do a power scraper sometime in the future to hopefully speed this whole process up, but we will have to wait and see. Until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something in this video. See you next time.